Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. Today we're going to continue our quest to make another Arcane Bloodline build. This was the Illusionist build that I promised you guys not too long ago. This is going to be extremely similar to the Fey Bloodline, Arcane Bloodline build comparison that I've done in the past. That one, if you recall, we went tiefling and we went to be an enchanter specialist with a side of illusion. We're actually going to do the opposite. We're going to be a gnome illusionist with a side of enchantment and again it's because i think that the illusion spells and the enchantment spells kind of belong together being mind affecting spells being one of the main reasons a lot of will saves here they have a lot of synergy between them i happen to know there's a piece of gear that i can get that's a bonus to illusion and enchantment spells now so this, this is a two-part video the second video will be the build proper so if that's all you're really interested in feel free to just skip to that video it'll be up in a day or two that'll be where we level you from one to twenty true magus Point blank master ray deck space build. I'll show you when we grab the feats, when we grab the spells, why we picked the spells that we did, when we picked them, when we did, things of that nature. Today's video is going to be talking about the spells because we have to decide what spells we want. We can't get them all. We'll get all the illusion attack spells, that's for sure. And then we're going to get some enchantment spells besides. So let's actually talk about these two schools. What do they do for us as a Magus? Let's talk about enchantment first. This is the school that beguiles targets. We're literally charming or we're literally uh, paralyzing or controlling directly a target. This is uh, a clear and obvious psychic attack as far as I'm concerned. It's why, in my opinion, many people think of the enchanters and illusionists as the psychics, if you will, of the wizarding world. And to be true, I agree. I agree, though, more for the enchanter. It makes perfect sense that this is a direct psychic attack. I'm pushing my will onto a target. That makes sense to me. Illusionist, not so much. I think of an illusionist more of a, a caster with psychic potential. And that's not a dig on them. They're definitely powerful casters, as we'll see. But remember, a lot of the illusion spells aren't direct mind-affecting spells. I know they have that uh, descriptor in the spell descriptor for almost all of their spells that attack. But I think of them more uh, as a distractor. Literally, they're casting illusions. They're, they're confusing your senses, not just your mind. So again, extremely powerful set of spells, as we'll see when we level up. So now let's talk about them individually, shall we? First, let's talk about what the enchanter brings to the table, so to speak. An enchanter is capable of shaping the battlefield in a variety of ways. We're going to be able to paralyze targets. We're going to be able to turn them to the dark side, stuff of this nature. Besides that, they even have buffs in them. Most people don't think about them, but heroism and greater heroism are enchantment spells. So again, what do those spells do? Well, besides the nuts and bolts of the pluses and the minuses and all that fun stuff, I mean, what do they really do to the character that you're impacting? I think I'm using my magic and my psychic ability to convince the target's mind, whether that's an ally, his pet, or myself, that we're basically cooler than we really are. It's really like a bonus to certain things, like your swing, your ability to ignore fear, or you know, better saving throws, better skills, you know, in the greater heroism's case, extra hit points. How do you do that with a psychic power? Well, clearly this is the mind over body type stuff that you guys have heard about and read about in the past. Makes perfect sense to me, and that's the way I'm dealing with that part. But if we talk about illusionists and how they differ, I think of them as taking their imagination, manipulating the weave so that they can use the weave to show you their imagination. That's how the illusion comes about. In many cases, it's not even their imagination that they're showing you. It's your worst of nightmares. Think of Phantasmal Killer. That came from your mind, not the illusionist mind. I don't know what's going to scare you to death, but you do. That's really what they're doing here. And again, great psychic potential, but it's really more about tricking the opponent. Now, if we go a step further, let's talk about the differences for how I feel about the two schools. I think of enchanters more as single target attackers. That's not to say they don't have AoE spells in their spell list. Hell, sleep spell is a fine example of this. But think about the spells that you commonly associate with the enchanter. Charm person, charm monster, hold person and monster, dominate person. Those are all single target spells. And while you could say they're, they do have mass versions of some of those spells at the higher level for wizards and sorcerers, okay, true, but that's advanced training. That's the highest levels that they get that stuff. So again, it's just an over-specialization of something they've really honed through the years. So primarily, I still think of them as single-target attacking caster types. And that's fine. It's not to say that they're limited to that. It's just to say that's the, the natural inclination I have. Now take the opposite, the illusionist. 
I think of the illusionist as being the AoE king and queen. That's really what they're doing. Take the spell that's illustrated here. Now, yes, I know it's an invisibility cloak. However, the invisibility spell must be useful against all your enemies, right? So I'm impacting the mind of all the bad guys, or their vision in some way, shape, or form. And as such, that's clearly AoE. Now, okay, maybe you could say, well, you know, maybe they're just bending light around the target. All right, I could buy that. You know, maybe the same, you know, where they're creating illusions. I mean, it is an illusionist spell. So for mirror image and blur, we're just warping light a little bit, duplicating the image. Again, okay, fine. I can grant you that. For the buffs, that makes sense to me. But now look at their attack spells. It doesn't make a lot of sense for all of them, does it? They're AoE, and again, in many cases, we'll see that those illusion spells are teammate friendly. So how can I impact the sight and vision and, and everything of everybody else that's the bad guy, but not affect my friends and myself? Clearly that's a mind affecting spell then at that point. And again, I highly think of these tar uh, illusionists as AoE masters, and that's really what they are. Again, do we only see AoE spells? No. Phantasmal Killer is another fine example, a single target spell that they use to great effect. But by and large, I think of them as AoE crowd controllers. Now, despite that, a lot of people might think of an illusionist as nothing more than holographic projector. Again, not too far off. However, I like to think of them more of like the holodeck from Star Trek. Or you could go comic book and say, you know, they're kind of like the Lantern Corps, using their green lantern rings where they literally impose their will, their imagination, and, it, and use their ring, which is magic, or the weave, and make it some physical construct that, that can impact the physical world. And again, that's kind of like shadow magic. So again, when we talk about things like Phantasmal Killer and Shadow Evocation, you can see an example of spells that they have infused and empowered in a way that can directly impact the physical world. Now I think part of the problem with an illusionist or an enchanter build is many people just naturally assume that they're just tricksters. They're joking and clowning around. Hell, half the time I think of the enchanter as the face of the team. I mean, let's face it, it's the enchanter. Who here, raise your hand, if you, you didn't actually envision the enchanter to be some buxomy blonde woman you know, wearing nothing but silk robes and you know, like gaudy jewelry all over the place. That's the first thing that comes to mind to me for any kind of enchanter, some snobby woman that just thinks she's better than everybody else because she can control everybody else. That's not exactly what an enchanter is. They don't have to be pretty. In our case, we're charismatic. Again, that doesn't necessarily equate to beauty. But I think that the weakness that we associate with them is cultivated by the enchanters and the illusionists. Take, for example, if we're on a team, you're the evoker that's slinging all the damage. I'm the illusionist side by side with you in the back ranks. We got a fighter, cleric, rogue, let's say, up front, protecting us. Now, who do I want the bad guys, as far as casters, to be shooting at with their bows and arrows? Me or you? Well, clearly I want the evoker to be shot. You know, leave me alone. I'm just a little trickster guy over here that casts some little pretty rainbow illusions. Ha ha ha. He's the guy that's slinging out lightning bolts at your ass. And again, they will see that when you attack. Your spells are obvious, and that's a big point. So again, I think that the illusionists cultivate this. They're weak, you know, don't worry about them quite so much, despite the fact they're quite powerful. Now, having said all that, it is kind of grounded in reality that they are technically weaker. Let's talk about the elephant in the room for illusionists and enchanters. All their attack spells, every last one of them that I could find anyway, have a saving throw associated with them, period. Without fail, there's going to be a saving throw. Now again, that doesn't mean that you'll make the check, but that guarantees, though, that 5% of the time, at least, that they will make the check. Remember, on a nat 20, you pass your check. Doesn't matter if your will happens to be negative 5 million. You roll a natural 20, you pass my will save. So again, that's kind of a problem for us. Whereas like an evoker, conjurer, transmuter, necromancer, some of their spells may not have saves at all. Some of them, that if they have a save, it's a, not a save or suck spell, where it literally is they make the save, and you know, like Snowball, for example. You make the save, so what? You're still taking damage. See what I'm saying? So there is that kind of stigma associated with the Illusionists and the Enchanters. You can straight up just miss, and that's a thing. We'll just have to deal with that. It's what I call the save or suck phenomenon. Now, having said that, there is also something else to talk about, why you may think they're weak when they're really not. Let's go back to our earlier example. I'm on the team with you, you're the Evoker, 
I'm the illusionist. We got our party in front of us. The fighter happens to be the captain of the guard. We're coming across a group of bad guys. Now, he turns to you, the evoker, and says, Hey, I know this asshat over here is a problem. We need to drop him ASAP. So I'm going to talk to these guys to distract them. Take him out. As soon as he goes down, we'll start fighting. Deal? Deal. Okay, so the, as the evoker, single target, you do your best single target spell. Let's say at the time it happens to be Scorching Ray. You hit him with two of your three beams, boom, boom, and then, then miss. Takes the guy out. Awesome. The fight's on like Donkey Kong. So, who do they attack first? They saw you shooting laser beams basically out of your fingers. Guaranteed you're getting shot at, right? Again, I'm fine with that, but you may not like that so much. Now let's take the reverse of that. The captain of the guard turns to me and says, Hey, this guy's a problem. Do your best to lock him down or kill him if you can. As soon as we see that he's incapacitated in any way, shape, or form, we'll start fighting. Because we know that this guy, again, is the problem. Deal? Deal. Okay. They start talking, and I cast Phantasmal Killer. Single target. Happens to actually catch the guy. He fails both the will and the fortitude saves. Clutches his heart and falls over dead. Clearly he's out of the picture. The fight starts. Now, who did that attack? Well, yeah, I know I did. You know I did, because I told you I did. Does the bad guys know? They didn't see a laser beam shooting out of my fingers. And while, yes, in the game, you will actually see the, you know, the little ghost folk ninja guy or whatever samurai that chops him down with a sword. If you actually understand the history of the spell, you know that for Phantasmal Killer, I'm basically pulling out an image from your mind, something that you're so ungodly terrified about, that if you see it, there's a chance you'll have a heart attack and die. That means no one else sees that image but you, and I think maybe the illusionists, but I don't know that for a fact. But definitely just you, as far as the bad guys are concerned, saw that. You died, you grabbed your chest and humped over. For all anyone knows, you ate a lot of bacon today. So, it's not my fault. Well, okay, you saw me, you know, talking and maybe starting my incantation, but you didn't hear what I was saying. You saw me gesturing a little bit. Maybe I'm Italian. This just happens to be my thing. So again, you don't know it came from me. And that's part of the illusion and enchantment problem. How do I take credit for my spells? Evocation spells are flashy. You saw that fireball. You know who set them on fire. And so does our team. Yay, Evoker. Now again, I crowd control the entire team, make it a cakewalk. Do I get a pat on the back? Does anyone turn to me and say, hey, good job, illusion guy? Probably no, because they don't necessarily know who did that. I mean, they know why they hired me, but if they didn't see me do quote-unquote anything, again, why would they give me credit for that? You see the problem? Again, misleading. It's what it is, but it's kind of a drag. So let's talk about the spells that you get as an illusionist that can do more than just crowd control. We just talked about Phantasmal Killer as the one illustrated here. Definite way to impact a physical a life force. Clearly something that can kill a target. And again, just to reiterate, as powerful as this fireball, lightning bolt, scorching rays are, if they have 200, 300, 7 million hit points, and they happen to fail my phantasmal killer, uh, will, and fortitude check, they die. Period. They go to zero. Game over. So again, a very, very powerful spell. Beyond that, of course, we have spells like Shadow Evocation, ones that we infuse with Shadow Matter. They call it Shadow Evocation for a reason. Clearly, it's used to mimic spells that will damage in great effect. AoE-style spells, Fireball, Lightning Bolt, Shout, Volcanic Storm, Ice Storm, all in one spell. Not counting the utility of that. Those are powerful spells anyway, and I get now all five of them in one at a higher caster level than you. Something we will employ to great effect. Now... Let's go to the enchanter side of things. Again, oh, well, they're just the, you know, the mind control guys, right? The beguilers, the ones that are literally charming and turning people over to our side or paralyzing them. Okay, sure, that's true, but they have spells that damage too. Here's an example of one, Constricting Coils, amazing spell. This spell literally is so powerful that I'm actually tricking your mind into thinking you're being constricted to death by a snake, and you actually take bludgeoning damage in the real world and die from it. Now. I think a lot of people have the problem with that in that they have a hard time wrapping their head around how could that possibly be. Besides, obviously, it's magic and psychic powers. But, you know, beyond that, it makes no sense. I'm a mind-affecting caster, and you're physically taking bludgeoning damage? What? Okay, well, this is how I've wrapped my head around it. I think I've tricked your mind into thinking you're being constricted by this snake. 
What does that mean? I think that your muscles are constricting on you. They are clenching up. They are tearing free from your uh, tendons and your bones. They're making your bones snap, preventing you from breathing. And now you can see how this could be something that could impact your life, right? Don't think that's a possibility. Take it from our perspective in this world. There's a disease called lockjaw. If you get a bacterial infection from this particular organism, it produces copious amounts of a toxin. That toxin makes your muscles contract and prevents them from relaxing. In a nutshell, I'm summing up here. But basically, this is a life-threatening illness. This will literally kill targets. Google images sometime lockjaw. You'll see a guy that literally looks like he's on a, uh, a hospital bed where he's about to be snapped in half. And technically, he is. His muscles are being pulled in every direction. Remember, your muscles are in groups. To move your finger left and right and left and right, a group of muscles are relaxing and a group of muscles are contracting. The problem is none of his muscles are relaxing. They're all contracting, which means they're all fighting to move that bone or whatever it is that muscle happens to be doing. Imagine what that does to your body. You don't have to. If you Google images, you can see it. Their muscles are tearing. Tendons are ripping from their bones. Bones are breaking. They can't breathe. They will die. And that's something that's real. So if that can happen in our world, certainly you can see how a magician with psychic powers can make something similar happen in their world, right? Okay, let's take a different enchantment spell that does damage. How about Serenity, one that we're going to probably get? AoE spell, teammate friendly, decent spell, does magic damage. What does it do, though? If you basically resist my will, because that's what a will save is, you attack me, my teammates, something I don't want you to do, and... Because of that, every combat round you're going to take, well, not psychic damage, because that's not in this game, it's magic damage, but I think of it as psychic damage. Point is, you constantly take damage. Just once a round, every time you take a swing at me or my friends or our pets. That's cool. It's not amazing damage, I'll grant you, but it's definitely there. Now, how do you wrap your head around how does a, a mind attack do that? Well, think of it as a psychic backlash, mental strike, however you want to think about it. And if that's not good enough for you, Here's my take on it. What if, by resisting my will, it's, it's very potent, right? Obviously, I'm a caster. It's a lot of effort that you have to put into overcoming me saying, don't attack us, which is basically what Serenity does. So you're resisting that. And as such, who's to say it's not something like a uh, magical stroke or an aneurysm or a uh, uh, palsy of some kind. So again, you can see how if those are something that happens in our world that's clearly a mind affecting problem that could directly impact your life, certainly a magical version could be just as deadly. And I'm cool with that. I mean, it's uh, nuts and bolts of it is a little different, but by and large, that's how I look at it. Now let's actually talk about ways to make sure we don't have that save or suck problem. The best case scenario, like I said, is a nat 20. They'll make their check nothing happens, you get screwed. Okay, that sucks. And again, that's, quite frankly, our best case scenario. What do I mean? If they have a good will save, or whatever save we're talking about, it could be reflexes or fortitude, but whatever save we're talking about, if they have a good save, and, or we have a bad DC check, it could be better than a nat 20, to, that they'll pass it, right? So our goal is to make sure that it's only a nat 20 that they can pass, right? So only 5% of the time limited to as much as possible and even that's going to infuriate you when you cast a spell and you're like oh come on like two of the three guys that you know are wusses roll a nat 20 and are immune you're going to be really dude it, i do it all the time it pisses me off it's part of this uh, illusion and enchantment build you're just going to have to suck it up and deal man but it's definitely there so let's talk about your dc check how do we get the dc check as high as possible well again we went arcane bloodline so that's to your benefit we're going to get spell focus and greater spell focus in two different schools, illusion and enchantment. That's to your benefit. We're going to get school power. That's something unique to us well, and sorcerers that are arcane bloodline. So again, that's for illusion. That's going to be to your benefit. We're also a gnome. That's a plus one to all illusion spells. Again, that's to your benefit. We're going to max out our charisma, which anyone would do that's a caster type that wants to have a high DC check. That's a charisma caster. If it was a wizard, it'd be more likely than not intelligence. So again, they were going to max that one up. So again, that's common, but the point's still the same. High, 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 high charisma, and then, of course, any gear that buffs those things as well. Again, in this case, charisma. 
that's not all we can do. Now, of course, the level of the spell is important. Is it the level 1 version? Are you casting a level 6 spell? That impacts the DC check. And if we do things, since we're Arcane Bloodline, if we meta magic it in any way, that gives us at least a plus 1. Why do I say at least? Because if you went heightened meta magic, you can make it variable levels. We're not doing that, but you could. So again, for everyone else, like me, that's taking like extend or reach or empower meta magic, if I can apply that to my spell and do so, that's a plus one to my DC check because of our arcane bloodline. So again, to our benefit. Then, because we're magi, true magus at level 20, something that even the sorcerers don't get, at level 20, we'll have a toggle we can turn on. That's a plus two to all our DC checks. That's to your benefit. There's gear out there that will bump your illusion or enchantment or both DC checks. There's uh, gear out there that will buff your fear-based spells. And we have two of those in uh, Phantasmal Putrefaction and Phantasmal Killer. So again, those are fear in the spell descriptor. They should get a buff if you wear that gear that buffs fear spells. That's awesome. Uh, what about uh, illusion? There's a, a pair of bracers out there that give you a bonus to your illusion spells. There's a necklace out there that gives you a bonus to your illusion and your enchantment spells. There's robes out there that buff your fire, cold, electric, or acid spells, depending on which robe you're wearing. Now, again, you're probably not wanting to wear a robe, but if you're casting from a distance, you're a deck space caster, and you're on a team, who's to say you can't wear that robe? And there are some spells that you have that are fire spells. I mean, we're going to grab the normal evocation spells as we level up anyway. Sirocco, beams, all that good shit still there. My point is this, if you talk about Shadow Evocation, remember, Fireball and Volcanic Storm are fire spells, even if they are illusions. Ice Storm is an, a cold spell, and Lightning Bolt's an electric spell. Sadly, we have Shout 2, and there's no Sonic bonus to DC checks that I've ever found. But that's still a thing. So we have all kinds of ways to push those DC checks high, high, high. Now let's talk about the flip of that. Not only can you buff your DC check to make sure that they only have a nat 20 that'll pass it, if they just happen to be good at saving, we can lower their saving throws. That's to your benefit. Here's a list of shit that you can do to lower the saving throw universally. All, all saving throws, notice that many of these are gray. From top to bottom you see gray everywhere, that's necromancy spells. It's not surprising that necromancy is the one that impacts the life force and therefore fucks up fortitude and reflexes and will saves. So it is not surprising. In fact, I almost wanted to go illusion necromancy, but it didn't make a whole lot of sense. I still like the illusion enchantment, and I am fine with that. There are some solid spells in here, though, that you may want to grab, like Innervation, but we will get stuff like Crushing Despair, potentially, for an enchantment spell. We have Constricting Coils and other kind of hold spells to paralyze targets. Overwhelming Grief is amazing because it basically turns them into flat-footed for your attacks, which is awesome. Phantasmal Putrefaction is under two different categories because it's a wisdom penalty, and then, of course, it puts them to sleep. So even though it's not technically a sleep spell, more on that later, but that makes them susceptible to all kinds of crap. We have a whole list of spells that you know, grapple or entangle, however you want to look at it, like Web, Obsidian Flow, Phantasmal Web, Tar Pool. Now, of course, we have to pick many of those from our free spell picks, but you can get Web as anyone else as you level up. That's an awesome spell still. So we have a variety of things that we will do to, to screw them over when it comes to reflex or will saves. Downside is, is there's not a whole lot we can do about Khan, with the exception of Cloud Kill, and that's more for killing than it is about lowering their constitution. Now, yes, it, could, it does both, but my point is you're really not relying on Cloud Kill. Man, I really need that Fortitude save to go down here. Let me put Cloud Kill out. No, you, you, let's kill this guy. Here, put Cloud Kill out. That's what you're doing. So again, it does help, but you're probably not using it for that is my point. But we have other stuff besides we just decrease their saves in general. And notice that we have the fear or shaking effect that literally can happen from spells, but it can also happen from non-magical effects like intimidation checks, corn against smash, dreadful carnage. That's something you will employ to great effect. Having said that, this is a rough list of stuff that we will have access to. Not necessarily the entire list and a couple of things we don't actually have. Let me give you those. Sicken, for example, we can't do this to anybody with our spells unless for a free spell pick we grab something like Ray of Sickening. Necromancy spell, I know you're surprised, but it's an amazing spell even if it is single target. But you are going to be a Ray caster build. It is kind of interesting. 
but that's what this one does. An amazing penalty to their swing, their damage, their saves, skill checks, and ability checks. And normally I just don't even talk about these two. But the more I think about it, the more I realize I'm wrong. This is important. Why? Think about this. If I trap you in a web spell, how do you break out of it after you fail your first save? It's not another reflex save because you're already in it. It's an ability or a skill check to get out, right? It's an athletics check or a mobility check or a uh, strength check, I think. One of those three. And I think it's whichever is the highest number. So if I've penalized your skill and your ability checks by two points, guess what? It's harder for you to get out of my web spell, right? Or any other entangle spell. That's my point. That's pretty baller. And I never really thought about that. So that's a lot cooler than I really gave it credit for. I, I had just assumed that most of those things are kind of like left, you know, uh, rollovers from it being a pen and paper version of the spell. But it's still definitely useful in the game. Oh, so while we don't get sickened, we have other ones that we do get. Notice uh, we will have like Sirocco still, so we can fatigue or exhaust targets, and this can still in impact you and your team, so be careful. Your reflex saves are worse than you think when you're exhausted. But we have Entangle like crazy. The only other one we don't have on this list is Energy Drain, and that can be overcome if we get Innervation. That's the only way for us to do this in this build. Again, shock of shocks, it's a Necromancy Beam spell. Just saying, Necro Lords, man, are free and pretty sweet. Or Necro Surgeon, I think is what I called mine. But the point's still the same. They, they have solid, solid uses, and the fact that they're minus to save stack, so I can beam you, beam you, beam you some more to really drop your saves into the toilet. Downside again, like always, a nat 20, and you're going to pass. Doesn't matter if you're at negative 500 for your will save. A nat 20, and you're going to pass. But the goal, again, like I said, is to get you down to that 5%. A nat 20 only is what I want to see. And if it happens, hey, it sucks, suck it up and deal. Use a spell where they didn't have a saving throw. We have those two, or where the saving throw doesn't matter. But they're not in the illusion spells, and they're not in the enchantment spells. Just saying. So let's talk about your spells as you level up, right? So the only enchantment they actually give you for free, the jackasses, is Daze, a cantrip. It's a day spell. It, it literally stops them from doing something for one combat round. The end. Kind of lame, but whatever. As far as we talk about spells from this point on, from 1 through 6, if they're white, they're illusion spells. Why can I say that for sure? Because red will also be illusion spells. Red will be illusion spells that you can pick for free as you get to level 9, 13, 17, or 19. Yellow ones are enchantment spells. Why do I have those separated out where I don't have to worry about enchantment spells up here? Because they don't give you any more enchantment spells. You have to buy them. That's a bummer. But illusion spells in white, illusion spells that you can buy in red, and enchantment spells you can buy in yellow. Okay? So color spray and vanish. We're not grabbing vanish just to jump right to the punch. Color spray solid and it's a decent spell from start to finish. Not teammate friendly. It's a cone. You will like it. Uh, there's no illusion spells. Matter of fact, there's no illusion spells that you can purchase uh, for free until level 4. So you'll see none a lot. You'll see lots of yellow, though. So Hypnotism and Sleep. Garbage spells by the time we could get them at level 9. If we could get them at level 1, 2, or 3, they'd be awesome. You would definitely want them. We can't do that. So go illusion, uh, go Illusionist Enchanter on, say, a Wizard slash Sorcerer build, and you'll have fun. We don't get them. Level 2. We can pick up Blur and Visibility we get for free, and Mirror Image we can grab as illusion spells they're all buffs you definitely want them your teammate wants some of them on themselves too so feel free to cast it on your team they will love you for this again solid solid spell picks no illusions again for free one enchantment spell in hideous laughter decent spell i like the spell i would actually grab it if i had room which i guarantee i don't but if i did it would definitely not crowd out something else because i guarantee you there's something else that's better but if i had room yeah i would totally take it Level 3, Displacement. Decent spell. Again, you can cast it on you, cast it on the tank. They will love you for it. 50% chance to straight up miss. That's awesome. Then we can get, again, no illusion spells, but you can pick up something like Deep Slumber, Hold Person as attacks, Heroism or Rage as bonuses, like buffs. And while you already know what Heroism in a nutshell does, Rage is just, no. Deep Slumber, Hold Person, we won't grab them. I'll show them to you whole person of these two, a whole person be the only one I would honestly be interested in. Why? Because, by, again, by the time we could pick up Deep Slumber at level 9, it's already losing its power. It has HD cap to it. Whole person does not have that problem. It is a uh, save over time spell, so every round that they fail it, there's another round where they could try to pass it. As soon as they roll that nat 20 or whatever they need to pass it, boom, they're out of the effect of the spell. 
still a solid spell though so again you do want old person or something similar the downside is that level 9 I know me if I'm gonna do a ray caster build I'm grabbing sense vitals so the earliest I could pick up any of these spells then would be level 13 and while whole person is still a decent spell even at level 13 at level 13 I can grab hold monster I can grab constricting coils those are better versions of that spell why not grab the better version okay you can make the argument it's a level 3 casting you don't have any illusion or enchantment spells here brother mutant that's not true remember this spell I can empower this thing and I can uh, extend the duration of the spell so I can take a level 1 spell make it level 2 I can take a level 1 spell make it level 3 and I can take a level 1 spell make it level 4 so I can do all that with just two meta magics, and I'll happily do so. So I got color spray covering quite a bit. I know that's weird, but remember, it always has utility. So again, I do want whole person, but it's probably not making the cut. Level four. Now we're talking greater invisibility. Yes, please. That works beautifully for our sneak attack we just picked up. Phantasmal killer. Why wouldn't you want to auto drop targets left and right? And this is our best casting category: illusion spells. You're really gonna have fun scaring the shit out of these guys watching them cluster their chest and fall to the ground that's just just amazing now we can also get free illusion spells as we level up too like we can pick up rainbow pattern decent spell so good in fact being teammate friendly that i almost want to grab it at 13 but sadly i'll pass because i'm going to grab constricting coils which is also available at level 13 a nice solid paralysis spell that does damage but rainbow pattern will be picked it's an amazing spell Confusion, crushing, despair, and overwhelming grief. First, let's just go in order briefly. Confusion, pass. I would grab it if I was an enchanter, say, as a sorcerer or wizard. Sure, I'd grab all of them, but not for this build. Crushing, despair, probably will make the cut. It's an AoE spell, not teammate friendly, but it's a save or suck spell, which means if they fail their save once, it's done. It's on them. The debuff is there, and it's a solid debuff. Overwhelming grief, single target, it's a save over time spell very annoying in that regard so again a nat 20 at any time and it wears off but until it wears off you or your team can beat the shit out of that guy because he's flat-footed guaranteed and he also has a minus two to his armor and that's part of that spell so it's even easier to hit him than just being flat-footed sets up our sneak attacks beautifully sets up all kinds of other stuff besides so again your team will love uh, having overwhelming grief as a spell that you can cast I'll probably grab it not necessarily for sure but it's, it's a pretty safe bet from there level five we don't get any more illusion spells from this point on unless they're bought with our free spell picks but you're gonna grab phantasmal web and shadow evocation amazing spells again aoe teammate friendly shadow evocation is not so be careful with that shit but phantasmal web is an amazing spell locks down big groups of guys makes them puke their guts out so they can't even attack when they're stuck in that imaginary web and it's teammate friendly hell yeah solid spell pick then shadow evocation the utility alone is amazing as far as enchantment spells constricting coils dominate person feeble mind hold monster and mind fog let's talk about hold monster and constricting coils because they're basically the same i would never grab hold monster over constricting coils if i'm grabbing constricting coils why would i need hold monster Having said that, in pen and paper, I would grab Hold Monster, and here's why. Or Hold Person, for that matter. One of the two. Why? Sometimes you want to interrogate somebody after the fight, right? So paralyze somebody, and then beat the shit out of all his friends while he's horrified, can't move, and just watches you do all that. Then it's time to interrogate the guy when the fight's over. So pen and paper-wise, that's perfect. But for this game, no. I'll take the one that does damage at the same time as paralyzing him, and that's constricting coils. So that's the one I'll pick from here. Dominate person. I'm warming up to it. It's nice to have a save over time spell where they literally do some work for me. And technically speaking, if the, their fighter or their barbarian that I turn to the dark side gets beat to death, why do I care? It's an attack that I didn't have to worry about because it was going to their friends. I don't have to worry about healing the son of a bitch. So it's kind of cool. So I am kind of warming up to Dominate Person. Feeble Mind, I want to like it. Let me just say it that way. I want to like this spell. But it's reasonably limiting in that it's almost always only useful against Arcane Caster types. Having said that, I can still see the appeal. And it does uh, help in ways that you may not be thinking about. For instance, uh, Feeble Mind, by the way, when it lands, it's a save or suck spell. It takes their intelligence and their charisma down to a 1. Okay? Having said that, 
That's why it messes up wizards. That's why it messes up many sorcerers, not all. That's why it messes up every magi you've ever seen. Uh, messes up, of course, those scale fist monks, because remember, their armor's coming from what? Charisma. That's right. So if there's charisma's a one, that's not helping them at all. And then, let's take it a step further. What else is charisma based in this game that could help you by the bad guys having a low charisma? What if they tried to do an intimidation check on you? Let's say they do Cornigan Smash or Dreadful Carnage. If their intimidation check is a persuasion check. Persuasion checks are based off of charisma. If their charisma is a one, you can see the appeal here. Like I said, I like it. I want to like it more. Probably won't make the cut. It's a damn shame. Whole monster, we already talked about it. Mind Fog. This one I've actually started to warm up to. And it dawned on me the other day while we're actually going to go into the game and show you some fighting. That's actually why I warm up to it. If every fight has a will save coming my way or my teammate's way, Mind Fog would be a horrible, horrible spell to take. Because if my teammate or myself walks into it and it gets not teammate or friendly, we have a minus 10 to our will saves. That's a bad idea then, right? Well, that's not every fight you get into. Sometimes you get into fights with just monsters. Sometimes you get into fights with things that are just fighter and rogue types that they're never going to do a will check on you at all. So, why not fight in that cloud where they have to come into it, they have to be uh, uh, penalized by it, assuming that they fail their check, which why wouldn't they? And then, they're at a minus 10 to all their will saves for a long period of time, even if they leave the cloud. So I have a bunch of will save spells with illusion and enchantment besides, that'll help me make sure that he gets screwed over after he fails in that mind fog. And of course you can cast the mind fog at a distance, let them run out of it, so long as they fail their check, it clings to them for multiple rounds. So that's, again, a benefit. So I'm starting to like mind fog. Just be careful with it, is my point. It's kind of like cloud kill. If you're not immune to it, which we are not, it could be an issue. Now, last level. Phantasmal Putrefaction, amazing spell. You're definitely taking it. Your highest illusion spell. Amazing spell in that at the very first save, you'll notice that everyone's taking wisdom damage. They failed, obviously. After that, they're now more likely to be susceptible to the next will saves that you cast because they have a wisdom penalty. They'll do another save, and after that, uh, they actually believe their guts are spilling out onto the ground, are so freaked out by it that they pass the fuck out. That's why it's a sleep spell, but not a sleep spell. What do I mean? Targets in this game can be immune to sleep effects. You know, like uh, elves can, dragons can. So, yeah, they're immune to sleep. Deep Slumber, Cloak of Dreams, which is an amazing spell we're about to talk about, because their sleep spell's proper. But, the Phantasmal Putrefaction effect, that is not a sleep spell. That's a passing the fuck out from the shock spell. As such, now that's coup de grace material for you and your team. That's awesome. And again, an amazing spell. You can get that at 17 or 19. Probably want to get that one as soon as I can, which means 17. But I'm not set in stone on that. Still a solid pick and teammate friendly. Gotta love this spell. Talk about Cloak of Dreams, Serenity, and Greater Heroism. You already know what Greater Heroism does, so I'm not going to talk about it. Sadly, it's going to be one that I'd love to grab it, but we're just not going to be able to get it. Serenity, on the other hand, could make the cut. I have yet to officially decide. It's a decent spell. That's the one that gives them the brain embolisms or whatever, as far as I'm concerned. And as such, does 3d6 of magic damage around. While that doesn't sound impressive, it's teammate friendly, it's a save or suck spell, so if they fail their save, they're screwed for multiple rounds. So long as you can survive it, they're taking damage every time they swing at you and your team. Just saying. Now it's only once a round that they take that damage, but the point's still the same. It's just extra damage. Think of it uh, if you go to back to your MMO game playing style. You've heard of burst damage and uh, dots. This is a dot spell, okay? This is going to be one that's constantly ticking on them for the duration of the battle. And enough of those dots and other things besides, and they will die from it. You know how that shit works. That's what Serenity to me is. Cloak of Dreams. Great spell. Not at all teammate friendly. But it's basically a sleep spell cloak on you. What that means is it's an AoE centered on your caster. Affects their teammates, affects their puppies and, and summons and affects any of the bad guys that dare get close enough to you. So on a solo build, this would be an amazing spell, and I'd probably grab it in a heartbeat. But if we're not going solo at all, you probably don't want this spell, or you, you, you need to do, I'd say you probably have to have a the turn-based game on, where you literally are controlling your team so micromanagey that you don't have to worry about them ever getting near your character, because the, the second one of your teammates fails their check and falls asleep at your feet, you're gonna be, ah, oh, son of a bitch. So yeah, probably no.
But again, on a solo build, fuck that shit. No one's around me that I want to keep awake. Let them all take nappy nap bye bye time. That's an awesome spell. So I'm just saying. Now we've talked about all the spells. Let's actually get into the game and show you how these spells actually work, okay? And we're back. So we have two different save files that I need to load up. Obviously one at a time. It's because there's so many spells I can't do it in one build, so I had to make two separate builds for this. This is not the completed build, just so we're clear. This just is to show you all the illusion spells that attack and all the uh, enchantment spells that I care about that'll attack. So let's load up. First one will be all the illusion spells and like four enchantments besides. So we load that up. I'll show you how they work and kind of some of the finer points of them. And then we'll go into the enchantment spells. I like to actually shut off my AI so I don't have to worry about my character running in and doing stupid stuff. I can actually micromanage the shit out. So let's just quick save with the AI off, run into the room. They're this is low level dudes, yeah. and if anything, this illustrates the weakness, if you will, of our character. Okay? Because I'm level 20, they're level 1, probably, or 2. And as such, when they get a nat 20 and pass the check, and you call bullshit, yeah, this is what you're going to have to deal with, dude. Just saying. That nat 20 is going to kill you every time. Here's our spells that we're going to talk about, though. Color Spray, Hideous Laughter, Deep Slumber, Old Person, Phantasmal Killer, Shadow Pattern, Confusion, Phantasmal Web, Shadow Evocation, and finally Phantasmal Putrefaction. After we go through all of these, I'll flip to the other save file and show you the other eight enchantment spells that we're missing. Okay? So first, let's do our Color Spray. Illusion Spell. No. Two of them, the other guy wasn't in the effect yet. But it is a save or suck spell. They failed their save, now they're under the effects. It doesn't last forever. The good news on this spell for me is uh, while not teammate friendly, there's no HD cap. That's nice. So even at level 20, you have the potential of stunning at least a target or several targets for one round or more. Obviously, we can extend that to two. Just saying. So there's reasons to like the spell. Notice that sightless targets are immune. Mind affecting spell is going to be a common theme. And the only spell that I found from um, illusion or enchantment that we have access to that are attack spells that don't have a spell descriptor like mind affecting is shadow evocation. And it doesn't have a spell descriptor at all. So maybe it is a mind affecting spell still, but it doesn't have it listed in under this. So maybe you don't have to worry about it being, you know, the, those characters that are immune to mind effects it's entirely possible that shadow evocation could hurt them. That's my point. So, solid spell. Notice, whenever you knock someone down or paralyze someone, you should always check your coup de grace to see if they're susceptible. Yes, they are. Now, the question will be, how long will that shit last? I can't tell you. But, here's the fun part. Just because I can't necessarily capitalize on that coup de grace stuff, because I've hit them and now I'm running away, run away, run away from the one guy that's left. But that doesn't mean my team can't come in there and slaughter some shit with some coup de grace in the same combat round. Say Jathel comes on in with that big hawk inside of the hers, that's a times four weapon when it crits, and it's a guaranteed crit when it's a coup de grace. See the fun you can have now? And if she happens to have stuff like cleaving finish and improved cleaving finish and greater improved cleaving finish, or whatever the hell it's called, she could lop heads off in a flipping circle with a coup de grace. Just saying, it's going to be freaking cool. So set up your team, always check that stuff. Amazing spell. While this doofus is chasing me, let's lock him down with a hideous laughter. See my nat 20 problem? That was pure dumb luck that that came across. I was going to see it happen at some point. But he hit literally nat 20, completely useless spell now. So we'll get teammates what the hell are you doing over there you can almost hear him talking to you just do it again you'll catch him he's not immune it didn't say that he was immune just that he actually made his save now this is the save over time spell notice again is it coup de ground material no he's not helpless he's just laughing his fool head off but the prone effect is useful for you because melee attacks are at a minus four to his armor class if i'm shooting at him at a distance and i'll show this to you he literally has a plus four to his armor class, so just be careful and know that. Plus four for being prone. Minus four if it was a melee attack. That's my point. So again, solid spell, and again, at least it takes him out of the fight. It's just like these guys did. So again, crowd control. That's the, the start of your build is going to be about that. You still have attack spells. You're still going to have all the fun that you normally have. But if you're talking about your losing enchantments, you really have to ramp up to the important stuff the ones that do attacks that, that actually hurt them. Okay. 
Let's go in and show you some other ones. Their life ends we have here. Uh, deep slumber. Here you go. One we're not going to pick, but I wanted to show it to you because a lot of people are going to be like, why didn't you show any of the sleep spells? Because you're not picking sleep or deep slumber because you're going to outlevel the usefulness. Notice it is teammate friendly and it does last for a long time. It is a save or suck spell. So when you can get these spells and get them to work, they're freaking awesome. Downside is it's a full damn round to cast that shit. Oh, second losers. Now everybody's asleep. Now remember what sleep affects are like. So much as a, a toe bump, a, a bitch slap, and they wake the fuck up and they're attacking. So don't do this and then have your teammates throw out some big ass AoE spells. Because if they're not killing them, then what the hell are you doing? You just woke up everybody again and wasted my deep slumber. Now again, I'm not taking the spell, but for general gameplay, that's my point. So any kind of love tap is enough to get these guys back on their feet. So, that sucks, but notice the ones that are sleeping are coup de gras material. So feel free to set them up, and they're, you know, and like I said, it's a save or suck. Once they miss the save, they're down. They're down for a long time. 20 minutes by the high level. And it could have been 40 if I uh, extended that shit. So I'm just saying, you could have had some fun if you had deep slumber or sleep early enough in the game. Sadly, we can't get it till 9, and again, I'm not passing up something like... Uh, sense vitals at 9. I'm grabbing it for sure. That means Deep Slumber could only come online at 13 at the earliest. And that's here. just not going to happen. It's not going to be useful for you. Having said that, let's talk about our whole person. Again, a save over time spell. Check the coup de gras. Remember, the bastard's going to be able to make a nat 20 and pass it. And again, this is not the highest DC check we have because it's an enchantment. We have our toggle on besides. We'll talk about DC checks here in a mo, but still a solid spell. But again, when's he gonna roll that 20? Very first round, the second round, the fifth round, never. Who knows? I can't tell you. But at the very least, so long as he's only gonna pass down a 20, I feel pretty good about walking away, finishing off his friends. On that, let's drop some of that, shall we? Ooh, ah, sucker. Let's look at that actual save for that one now. Two saves, will and fortitude save. Both at DC of 28, 28, as you can see, same number each time. Why is it 28? Okay, so it's an illusion spell. Base is 10. It's a level 4 spell. Yep, so 10 and 4 is 14. We have a sub plus 7 for our charisma right now because of that 24. So 14 jumps to 21. Where do the other 7 points come from? 1 came from being a gnome. Uh, 2 came from spell focus and greater spell focus illusion. Two came from a kick-ass little toggle down here, and the other two, that came from school power plus two for being an arcane bloodline and when illusion as my specialty. So we have a plus seven to all our illusion spells, DC checks. We have a plus four, thanks I have spell focus and greater spell focus for e uh, enchanter, uh, for enchantment spells, and with this toggle on, I have a plus four to all enchantment spells. I have a plus two to every other spell's DC check, so we're doing pretty good for ourselves, is my point. Let me hit uh, this doofus here with something like color spray again. Okay, take a look at our lowest illusion spell. 25 DC, okay? Solid, solid number. I like to take a wizard that could cast the same type of spell, give him the highest intelligence like I have, 24 charisma, and let's give him a 24 intelligence. What would a normal wizard cast that at? Base 10, level 1 spell, so 10 plus 1 is 11, plus 7 for his high intelligence, right? So 18. 18 is the base, as far as I'm concerned. So we're at seven points higher than the base, right? Well, the wizard could get spell focus and greater spell focus illusion, sure. So then that's 20 for a normal illusionist wizard. Can the illusionist wizard be a true magus? No. Can the true uh, the illusionist wizard get a plus two from school power? No, they don't have access to it. A uh, sorcerer can. Remember, sorcerers have arcane bloodline as one of their bloodlines too. They will never get this plus two true magus though, so we will always be ahead of a sorcerer by two in the best case scenario. As compared to a wizard, we're going to be ahead by at least four. Just saying, we're doing way good for our level one through six spells. Now past that, they trump us with the fact that they can cast seven, eight, and nine. That's always the thing. But don't kid yourself, we have solid DC checks here to the point where we're considered casting spells at difficulties that mimic or exceed their 7, 8, or 9 spells. See what I'm saying? So we're doing fine is my point. 
don't fret for a minute that you are considered a weak caster because you're really a Magus only. No, we're the best kind of Magus, in my opinion, Their the Arcane Bloodline. Here. Now, having said that, we hit them with Deep Slumber, we hit them with Hold Person, we show them a Phantasmal Killer. Let's show you a really nice rainbow pattern. Decent AoE, teammate friendly, cast that shit while you're standing in the no. circle. You catch as many as you can with that uh, AoE pattern of theirs, and they are literally save or suck spell screwed. He fails his check, our best case scenario, because it's an illusion spell. And these guys are down for 20 rounds. Again, like a sleep spell, though, if you love tap those bastards, they wake the fuck back up. So don't AoE that shit. Just screw them over. Uh, this is a non-teammate friendly spell, Confusion. Just to show it to you, not a fan of it. Confusion's a problem in that it's random die rolls. It's a save or suck spell, so there is that. But every round, they do a random check. Which is this shit here. Every round, they'll check. Do they act normally? Do they just stand there doing nothing? Do they attack themselves, which is cool and weird all at the same time? Or attack the nearest creature, which could be you, your friends, their friends. You see the problem. It's just a weird spell. Again, if I was a pure enchanter, wizard, or sorcerer, yeah, I'd grab it, but I probably wouldn't use it that much. But it's an okay spell. Again, the fact that it's a save or suck spell is kind of baller. Will hurt. So these guys are a save or suck spell and, and completely screwed. I can take my sweet time. Now notice that it's not coup de gras. That's still a thing. These guys are capable of defending themselves. They're just staring at the pretty lights. But they're going to do it for two goddamn minutes. 20 rounds. That's freaking awesome at the highest level here. 40 if I actually extend it. My point's still the same though. They're just sitting there. So take your sweet time. Get the team together. Everybody attack in unison at one target. Drop them. Then everyone turns their attention to the next target and drop him or her. See what I'm saying? So you just have your time single targeting, single targeting. And for a raycaster build like this, it makes perfect sense to me to do that sort of thing. So let's go back. Show you another one. So that was uh, rainbow pattern and confusion. Let's do our phantasmal web now. Their life ends Got another here. amazing spell. Almost want to ditch not ditch, not grab constricting coils at level 13, because I can grab this spell. That's how good this spell is. Watch this. AoE, look at the size of this monster. Just get in the corner, cast it, boom. Clearly you'll see who uh, made their check because they'll be moving still. Everyone else failed. They believe they're in a web spell. If you zoom in, you can see the dark web on their feet. Next round, they'll do another check, and if they... Uh, believe that they're still in the spell and they believe that there are spiders crawling all over them then they'll get the nausea effect that's amazing there it goes puking your guts out they cannot attack and they cannot cast spells they can defend themselves so coup de gras notice that it's still an x but they are basically taken out of the picture for a good long while here i'm just gonna dump this guy now the weird thing about this spell is is they're going to continue to try to make a check Okay. So you'll see them round after round trying to pass that fortitude check. If they do, remember a nat 20 is going to solve their problems. If they do, they still believe they're in the web spell. So if they're locked up like this, they'll try to break out of it. That's a mobility check or an athletics check or a strength check, I believe. So when you see one of these guys pass it, there you go, mobility check, right? And again, same DC check. Remember when I said there's spells that penalizes skill checks as well as uh, ability checks? This is why you want to debuff the bastard, because again, you don't want him breaking out of the web, or the fake web spell. Now, the good news is, because he failed and he's still stuck in the web, guess what's going to happen? Next round, he'll make another check and he'll probably be sick again. Come on, stop passing you, jackass. There he is, he's back to puking his guts out. So again, AoE style, that's a really nice crippler. Again, not useful on mind-affected immune targets. That would screw you completely, but so would almost all your other spells. Just saying, there's reasons that we dip outside of illusion and enchantment, right? Okay, now let's talk about shadow evocation. Fun Their part here, here is I can actually line up beautifully with a shadow evocation lightning bolt spell. No. Suck it, losers. Now, first, let's get that DC check. Notice there's two checks, will and reflex. Why? First, the will check is to make sure that they believe the illusion. The next check is to believe that it's a lightning bolt, so they're going to try to dodge out of the way. So reflex save and will save. Reflex save and will save for fireball. 
will save and fortitude save for shout. These ones are just will saves, okay? Something else to point out here, notice that fire bonuses will impact these spells, whether it's more damage for fire spells or better DC checks for fire spells, that impacts this spell, that impacts that spell. They are fire spells proper. This is electric spell, this is sonic, not that there's any bonuses to that, I'm just saying, and this is a cold spell proper. So if you have something that buffs the DC check of cold spells, you've buffed this spell. That's cool, that's good information. Note something else, the AOE effects are uh, duration based. So the difficult terrain here, Their life ends from here. volcanic storm and uh, ice storm, those are effects that are going to last longer than normal, right? So because they have a duration, just like Shout has a duration, we can actually extend these spells. So we can meta magic these little bastards, which is to your benefit. But I want you to see something else. Notice, I'm going to cast this spell. No one's in the area. So you may think, well, you're wasting your time. No one's going to get hurt. Yeah, but I want to show you something. Notice when I run in, I have a will save because I'm trying to believe, or disbelieve, excuse me, the illusion. Okay? If I disbelieve it, I pass my will save, which I have done. I run around like normal. Watch what happens to them when they fail theirs. See how slow they move? This is a persistent effect. Again, it will wear off eventually, but it doesn't wear off while you're in it. Okay? Now watch something else. Now I can be shooting these guys with arrows and crossbows and whatever besides, and beam spells and ray spells, and so should your team. But my point is, watch what happens when I leave the area of effect and then run right back in. Now I failed my check. And again, I could have passed it again, but my point is, you leave the area, come back in, it impacts you again. So if you ever pass the check, you should stay in the field, running around, uh, keeping these guys uh, busy, distracted while your teammates are peppering the shit out of them. Right? Just saying, that's good combat tactics. So, that's Shadow Evocation in a nutshell. Let's talk about the last one here, Phantasmal Putrefaction. Another one we're going to grab. You know, get this at 17 or 19. Solid spell, massive AoE, teammate friendly. You need to be in the area effect, in my opinion. Notice anyone that had a, a minus wisdom number pop over their head was affected. So you clearly know who got targeted. Someone failed his next check and he went to sleepy sleep bye bye time. That's what happened there. Okay. So this guy, just to show it to you, is Coup de Grammatira. This is the sleep spell that's not a sleep spell. Now he will make a check every round to try to get the hell back up. If he ever believes that he's not affected by the spell, can get another will save, right? If he ever believes with an at 20 that he's not under the effect, he'll stand back up the spell now has worn off. So you need to capitalize on that sneak attack potential the coup de gras or whatever you want to do to this guy. Just saying, do it as soon as you can. But, it's a solid, solid spell. It's just bad luck for me that two guys weren't affected by it. And again, proves my point that level 1 characters are going to have a lot easier time. Oh, here he is. He's back on his feet. Than you think. Because again, that nat 20 screws you. But again, nothing stops you from casting it again. And remember, that's a constant penalty to his wisdom. That's a constant penalty then more likely than not, I should say, a penalty to their will saves. Why? Because their damn wisdom went down. You lowered it. So their will saves suck. So again, both of them this time got caught. And again, coup de gras. Yes. I can single target them. Again, it's a sleep spell, so if you slap them around, they're waiting to hell back up. The funny this part is, hurt. if I attack him, if I attack him and he doesn't die, <laughs> he gets back up. But, Next round, he will again make another will save and then pass the fuck back out if he fails it. Just saying. So he will continue to do that. Make a check, make a check, make a check. Until he passes that will save, he's always going to pass the fuck back out again. So that's to your benefit. So now, let's load up the other eight. So this is the other save file for the other eight enchantments that we're not talking about yet. I'll do a quick save again. Make sure my AI is off and we'll show you these spells. Now, Their life ends here. get into a corner again. Always a good combat tactic. You'll notice, pause it, that I have still Color Spray and Phantasmal Killer. You, you can get them as you level up. Of course you're going to grab them. These are the other ones you have to buy, though. So we have Crushing Despair, Overwhelming Grief, Constricting Coils, Mind Fog, 
Dominate Person, Feeble Mind, Cloak of Dreams, and Serenity. Okay, now that's not counting heroism and greater heroism, but you already know what those ones did. These are the ones that attack, and that's what I wanted to show you. All right, so now let's uh, go with Crushing Despair. AoE, teammate not friendly, so watch that shit with the team. Damn it. Bastard. Now the good news is it's a save or suck spell. Once they're under the effect, they're penalized. The downside is, is I don't think there's a visual cue on them that this guy and this guy was the one that was impacted. They look the same as this dude here. So there's no visual that crushing despair is on them. Okay? That's a bummer, but it's what it is. But at last, by the way, once they fail it, they fail it once and they're done. They're at a penalty for 20 minutes at the highest level, 40 if we extend it. Now, do I need to extend it? No, but again, that gives me another casting at a higher level is my point. Also, do I need it to be 20 minutes even? No, but I'd rather be 20 minutes than 20 rounds. You see what I'm saying? So again, solid, solid spell. Notice, uh, here, let's do Serenity. We're going to do one a little out of order. This is teammate friendly, but you need a target. Okay, and I wanted to show that to you for a reason. First, that's a saver suck spell. Notice we got crushing despair minus two, crushing despair minus two, and the guy that didn't have crushing despair on him because he dodged out of it. The little bastard got caught up on the damn pillar. But I got all of them with it. Now, while I'm running, since they're melee characters, they're not going to do shit to me, so it's not, they're not going to take damage. And you need to have them attack themselves, or attack you or your teammates, so that they take damage. And again, you saw magic damage, 3d6. 10, uh, 15, that was a nice one. Um, but the point is, you can't get much higher than 18 if you maximize it. If you empower and maximize it, you can get it up to 27. And that's per round, and it's a save or suck spell. Pretty damn solid spell then, right? So now that we've showed you those two, let's show you another one. Let's show you Overwhelming Grief. Okay, single target. This one is a save over time spell. He failed it, but again, on a nat 20, we're going to have problems. But, first off, is he helpless? No. He is, however, flat-footed. How do I know that? Because it's in the spell description, for one, and that's why I want this spell, because I'm going to be sneak attack bastard man with sense vitals and stuff, right? So, I want to be able to set myself up for sneak attack. That's a way for me to do it. Now again, on a nat 20, he could break out of that shit and there's not nothing I can do. But also notice, my very first strike, not only is he flat footed, but he's at a minus two to his armor because of the spell I hit him with. So that's a massive penalty two different ways from one spell. Again, capitalize it when you can because the second he makes that nat 20, he's out of the effect and you're screwed. But it's what it is. Same with constricting coils, so a save over time spell. This one is susceptible, so that's awesome. So he's totally helpless. Um, but again, he's going to make saves over time. Good news is, is he's also taking damage over time. That's the one that constricts on them and does bludgeoning damage. Remember your lockjaw spell? That's basically what we're doing to this guy. You're ripping his muscles from his body, screwing him over. So that's a solid spell. Uh, Mind fog. Notice how these guys here. Let's actually get to the big group. Notice how these guys again are not anything other than fighters or rogue type, right? They're not going to do any will saves uh, checks to Their me at all. So here. that's why I say I can do stuff like get in a corner or a doorway and slap down something like mind fog and even stand in that shit. Because even if I fail my save, which I didn't to my luck, even if I fail my save. These guys did too, and they're more likely to be hit with my other spells now. So let's hit them with, um... Well, let's turn them to the dark side, shall we? It takes a while to do it. One full round. Boom. Notice it doesn't seem to be that I'm having to make another will save. Which is to my credit. So we're actually in the cloud. Once you pass your check, stay in the cloud, you're fine. I guess that's cool news. I didn't know that till today. Uh, but notice this guy succeeded on his will save, even with mind fog on him. That's a minus ten. His will's minus nine. Remember, I said a nat twenty is going to screw you every time. There's nothing I can do about that. But remember, he's still under the effect of the mind fog, and as soon as they leave, remember the effect still clings to them for two to twelve more rounds. So just hit him with another one. Boom. 
Solid failure now. Awesome sauce. And again, I could do the same for his buddies. Let's hit this dude with, say, Fever Mind. Failed it. Not surprising. And he hit a 19, no less. So we really screwed him over. So that's awesome. But again, he completely got screwed there. And you're not going to notice it because, again, Feeble Mind, that's that intelligence is one and charisma is one. These guys don't care. But if they were someone that did care, that was still a solid spell to hit them with. It's just not something that's going to be amazing. And I don't like the fact that there's no visual cue to let you know that he's under the effect. That kind of sucks. Notice something else, though. For the guy that's on my side, he's green. Notice this. Show you my attack. Notice how I am getting flanking bonus. He's my buddy. As far as the game is concerned, he's a teammate and an ally. So I get circumstantial flanking bonus and anything else that comes from having a teammate standing next to me or impacting the bad guy or what have you. So, again, kind of cool. Now let's load up. We'll do the Cloak of Dreams. I think that's my last one. This one is a self-buff, so to speak. And it takes a full round to cast it, so you might want to do it before you go into a room. Get everybody together. Boom. Save or suck spell. They fall down sleeping. Again, a love tap will wake him up. It's crude, coup, uh, crude, coup de gras material. Man, I can talk. I swear I can. Coup de gras material here. So again, you and your team can have some fun. They're down for a minute. Unless you love tap them, obviously. They're down for a minute unless they take some kind of damage. That's awesome. And this spell lasts on you for one round per caster level. So at the highest level, it's two minutes of buff, so to speak. I can, of course, have four minutes on me if I extend it. That's awesome. Sadly, again, not teammate friendly. You can make your teammates sleepy, make their pets and summon sleepy, so don't get near your team. But a great spell for um, someone that's running solo, I would definitely think about grabbing it if I was going solo. So again, a solid, solid spell. Uh, notice that because it wears off in a minute, they'll stand back up, right, if I don't kill them. Now, because it's still on me, the effect, you know, the aura, they can literally come back over to me after they stand up and get reapplied for another sleep. You can't do it just standing next to them. They're asleep. It only works until they wake back up. When they wake back up, they can go right the hell back down, which is funny as hell to me. So again, up to you. Obviously, the best bet is just to stay and kill them. And again, how would you do that? Single target. That's how. You really want to hit them with um, stuff that will capitalize, for example, on your... Sense vitals so that you can literally do some sneak attack loving. Like so. Flat footed touch attack. Bonus to their armor because they're prone for a ranged attack, but a massive penalty to their armor because they have no dexterity because they're sleepy. They're completely helpless. So their dex is considered quote unquote zero, hence the minus five. So still, it's easier for me to hit him all kinds of ways. Solid, solid spell, and again, you know, I, it pains me not to grab it on a teammate build, but my teammates are idiots. Now, having said that, remember, it is a sleep spell proper, just like sleep, just like deep slumber. Remember, we said that there were bad guys and good guys in different races in the game that are immune to sleep. So, let's say you put together a elf party that were all immune to sleep effect, except for you, let's say. You could have Cloak of Dreams. Your teammates could stand right next to you and pack them one damn bit. I'm there. That's pretty awesome. Now with that, that's all I really want to say here. The next video will be, like I said, the build proper. Uh, just spoiler again, just so you know, it's a Raycaster deck space build. I'm grabbing every attack illusion spell that we can get. So Color Spray, Phantasmal Killer, Rainbow Pattern, uh, well, Phantasmal Web, Shadow Evocation, and Phantasmal Putrefaction. That's six spells, two of which we can get as we level up, and that's these two. Four more that I have to spend free spell picks on. Plus Sense Vitals, that's a fifth spell. We only get nine free spells, so I have to pick four more spells for enchantment, assuming I want them only from enchantment. Well, we have a lot of good enchantment spells, as you saw. You know I want Constricting Coals, I probably want Mind Fox, that's two right there. Do I want Crushing Despair and Overwhelming Grief? Good solid picks. 
that's my last two then. But then I don't get Dominate Person. I don't get Serenity. I don't get, you see my problem. There's a lot to pick from for enchantment. And I have to be careful. So the next build may take a day or two. Trust me, it's coming. And I'll explain my logic behind why I settled on the spell picks that I did. But with that, my name is Brother Mew. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.